We all wonder what's waiting for us in outer space. Some of us have even dreamt about becoming an astronaut just to see the wonderful universe with our own eyes. But space isn't always as exciting as it sounds. It can be a dangerous place to be stuck in. An astronaut actually experienced a real-life cosmic nightmare when he got lost in space. How did he manage to survive? What did he see out there? Let's find out. But first, make sure you've given this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. The Race for Space Sergei Krikalev was born on the 27th of August 1958 in the city of Leningrad, presently known as St. Petersburg in Russia. As a young boy, Sergei was aware of the space race between two superpowers, the Soviet Union and the USA. Although it was a result of the mid-20th century Cold War, the space race showcased competitive technological advancements. Both adversaries attempted to show their mastery. Over time, Sergei continued to keep his eyes on the race for space. In 1981, he obtained a degree in mechanical engineering from the Leningrad Mechanical Institute. He joined NPO Energia, the Russian industry organization dealing with manned spaceflight activities. Initially, Sergei tested spaceflight equipment and performed duties as part of ground control for space missions. He played an important role during an in-orbit rescue mission conducted by the Salyut 7 space station when it failed in 1985. He remotely guided the repatriation of the station's onboard control system. Based on his successes, Sergei was selected to undergo cosmonaut training. The course included space-related learning like astronomy, orbital mechanism, and methods of scientific experimentation. In 1986, he earned his cosmonaut wings. Cosmonauts are the astronauts particularly trained by the Russian Space Agency, and the literal meaning of the word is universal sailor. In the early part of 1988, Sergei commenced training for his long-duration spaceflight aboard the Mir space station. On the 20th of February 1986, Mears was launched for research on how the human body reacted to space travel and also for scientific research like studying Earth's surface. On the 26th of November 1988, Sergei was to blast off on the Soyuz TM-7 expedition, which was a joint venture between the French and the Soviet Union. On the 27th of April 1989, the mission came to an end. This success motivated Sergei to get back there for a longer duration mission. However, his next mission would make him desperate to get back to Earth. Life on Mears By the end of 1990, Sergei was preparing for his second space mission. He was to form part of the crew for the Soyuz TM-12 mission. On the 18th of May 1991, he reached Baikonur Cosmodrome, the world's first spacecraft to launch a rocket into space. His colleagues included Anatoly Artsevarsky, an experienced Ukrainian commander, and Helen Sherman, the first British astronaut. Baikonur Cosmodrome, presently part of Kazakhstan, has the distinction of launching the first artificial Earth satellite, Sputnik, on the 4th of October 1957. Yuri Gagarin also was launched from here to become the first human being to travel into space on the 12th of April 1961. Although Sergei's mission was routine, it became an historic one. They reached Mir after travelling for two days and the targeting system failed due to which Sergei had to dock their rocket manually. Mir space station was equipped with an automatic dock system which enabled two spacecraft to locate each other and stay in the same orbit. Despite being a dangerous affair, Sergei managed to dock the crew safely. Mir had space to accommodate up to six spacecraft. However, usually three cosmonauts lived there at a time as it was extremely cramped. The space station observed 16 sunrises and an equal number of sunsets daily. Therefore, the crew had to keep the blackout for simulating nighttime. Astronauts have to do workouts to avoid losing muscles. The process is known as atrophy, and astronauts have experienced a loss of up to 20% of muscle mass on spacecraft. It's applicable to short missions lasting 5 to 11 days. Life on the Mir resembled the fictional spaceship the Millennium Falcon. By the time Sergei docked for the second time, the station had developed a lot of electrical problems which was quite frustrating as astronauts had to rely on technology even for breathing. Technical mishaps often caused the station's temperature and humidity and resultantly became a breeding ground for microorganisms. It didn't bother Sergei much and he had awesome crew members with him. On the 26th of May 1991, Helen and two other cosmonauts headed back to Earth, whereas Sergei and Anatoly stayed behind for maintaining the station. The Space of Collapse 
Sergei's mission was scheduled to end in October 1991. He had yet to spend five months on Mir. For him, the most exciting tasks included six spacewalks, which they had planned to complete during their stay for carrying out external essential repairs and upgrades of the space station. During the last walk, Anatoly's helmet visor fogged as a heat exchanger of his spacesuit had run out of water. Fortunately, Sergei managed to guide his blind commander back to safety. But in August, the situation became difficult. Sergei was able to take a whistle-stop tour through the wonders of the world in just one and a half hours as Mir encircled the Earth. He was able to observe a lot from the Pyramids of Giza to the Great Barrier Reef to the Grand Canyon, but he could not imagine what was happening in the Soviet Union which led to its collapse. Then, President Mikhail Gorbachev launched his reform program known as Perestroika, which annoyed communists. Tensions were rising in the USSR since the 1980s, and the showdown took place on the 19th of August 1991 when a coup started to remove Gorbachev from power. The coup had a lasting impact on the USSR as it indicated the end of the Soviet Union. His wife, Yelena, kept Sergei informed of ongoing events in his country. He also used to communicate with other radio operators, including one American-born Margaret Laquinto, who provided him with uncensored news about the brewing situation in the Soviet Union. Sergei faced a lot of confusion about the future of the space program and his mission. The Last Soviet Cosmonaut Gradually, Soviet states started to break away. By December 1991, most states were independent. Kazakhstan, being the last, declared independence on the 16th of December 1991, which had serious implications for the Soviet space program, particularly due to the location of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Kazakhstan's government demanded feed for use of the space complex, whereas Russia was strapped for money. Intending to win the goodwill of Kazakhstan, the Russian space agency, having headquartered in Moscow, agreed to provide a spot on the next shuttle to Mir to Kazakhstan cosmonaut. It had a serious effect on Sergei as the inclusion of Toktar Obarikov, the Kazakh cosmonaut, meant that Alexander Kaleri, who was to replace Sergei, was dropped from the mission. Resultantly, Sergei had to stay at Mir indefinitely. A new team, led by Commander Alexander Volkov, arrived on the 4th of October 1991. Six days later, two cosmonauts, along with Anatoly, returned to the Earth. By the 26th of December 1991, the Soviet Union had been completely replaced by 15 independent republics. The country which had sent Sergei to space was no more in existence, and his passport had become invalid. After spending Christmas and New Year in outer space, Sergei began to wonder if he would be able to go back to Earth. During his long stay, the Russian economy further deteriorated. The situation reached the point that the rebranded Russian space agency could hardly afford to transport food and supplies 240 miles outside the Earth's atmosphere to Mir. Sergei could do nothing but wait and see. It was known even in the 1990s that those who stayed for a long duration in space faced serious health issues. Sergei was exposed to radiation from highly energetic solar particles as the distance from the sun was less. He had increased chances of suffering from cataracts and cancer. Sergei had one option to get back to the Earth, but it would have been immensely expensive. They had a Soyuz capsule on board Mir, which was specifically designed for returning to Earth in an emergency. But the situation was grim, as Sergei was the only cosmonaut having the technical know-how to keep things working. He faced a dilemma of whether to continue his mission or go home. Out of the present Despite unprecedented hardship and uncertainty, Sergei continued to perform his duties due to sheer determination and commitment to his mission. He continued to work relentlessly to keep Mir in working condition for three more months. Luckily, things took a positive turn when in March 1992, Germany paid $24 million as a political bargain for Klaus-Dietrich Flader to travel to Mir who became the first German astronaut in space. It was good news as Russia could afford to replace Sergei who had spent 10 months orbiting Earth and having circled the planet about 5,000 times. Sergei felt elated and became hopeful to reunite with his wife and daughter. Russian space agency selected Alexander Kala to replace Sergei. On the 17th of March 1992, the crew of Soyuz TM-14 comprising Alexander and Klaus and the German cosmonaut started from Baikonur Cosmodrome. One week after the arrival of the crew, Sergei was able to start his journey back to Earth, accompanied by Klaus and Commander Volkov. 
The Soyuz landed at the Baikonur on the 25th of March 1992. When the door opened and a dizzy spaceman moved out, a small crowd rushed. Sergei had the red Soviet flag on his spacesuit, which also had stitching letters USSR. As a result of 10 months of muscle atrophy, Sergei required the help of several men to stand against Earth's gravity. It was refreshing for him to breathe while inhaling fresh atmospheric air for the first time in 311 days. He put on a fur coat and was able to enjoy a bowl of broth, which proved to be his first bit of fresh food in approximately one year. He travelled on a Russian plane to reunite with his wife Yelena and young daughter Olga. He must have felt quite alien when he arrived in Russia, which had changed immensely. His hometown had changed its name from Leningrad to St. Petersburg. Not only the validity of Sergei's passport, but a lot had changed since his time in outer space. Prolonged stay in space as well as space travel has certain nefarious effects on the physical health of humans. One side effect that one can boast about is time traveling 0.02 seconds into the future. Sergei holds the unique record for the largest human leap in time travel. Einstein's theories of relativity highlight that the speed at which an object is traveling and the distance from a massive gravitational source like Earth can change the way that objects experience time. It seems quite strange, and some of the first manufacturers of GPS satellites also thought like that. However, when they sent these satellites up in space, which had atomic clocks accurate to the nanosecond, they were extremely astonished to find that within minutes of activation, compared to the clocks available on Earth, the clocks mounted on the satellites were running slightly faster, however, had a sufficient factor to make the GPS readings quite useless. Within a few hours, the GPS readings became inaccurate by tens of miles. They had unintentionally proven Einstein's theories correct. One may ask what actually are Einstein's theories. As per Einstein's theory of special relativity, an object moving faster relative to another will experience time slower. On the other hand, the theory of general relativity states that time runs faster for an object the further it is from a source of gravity. These two principles seem to work simultaneously in space, but as opposites. However, they don't quite cancel out. It's assumed that the theory of general relativity seems to be the winner as far as objects orbiting the Earth are concerned. It shows that objects orbiting Earth experience time as moving faster than on Earth. It means that upon his return to Earth, Sergei was technically 0.02 seconds older than he would have been having remained on Earth. It also applies to GPS systems, which need to have compensation mechanisms to cater for the effects of time dilation to function. Reach for the Stars Despite his difficult experience, Sergei continued his celestial career as a cosmonaut. Just within two years, he was again busy in space travel. He participated in four more missions between 1994 and 2005. He again made a record when on the 2nd of November 2000, he formed part of the team who embarked on the first long-duration expedition to the International Space Station. On the whole, Sergei logged 803 days, 9 hours and 39 minutes in space, spread over 17 years. In 2005, he led his spaceflight as the commander of the 11th expedition to the International Space Station. Sergei's story is unprecedented and immensely motivating. We hope you liked learning about Sergei and his incredible journey as an astronaut. Share your opinion with us in the comments and also like and subscribe to our channel.